Yes, let's see if that sounds okay. Is it too loud now? Is it okay? I, uh, everybody says it's great. Okay, it's great. That's okay, awesome. perfect, perfect. So today I'm coming from <laughs> Hobbiton, and um, <laughs> I'm in isolation here in Hobbiton, and this is my home. This is I uh, inherited it from Bilbo Baggins. Um, actually, Robin and I went to New Zealand together last October, and um, after we did Equidays, we went to visit Hobbiton, and I think that was one of the highlights of my trip. We had an absolutely perfect day with big puffy clouds floating through the sky and I had my new iPhone 11. So I was doing all these cool portrait shots and I was just having so much fun. So um, that's, I thought today would be great to have Hobbiton with us. <laughs> it's great. It was really good. Absolutely. Uh, somebody put their hand up. Oh, um, um, okay. Sometimes people do that when they're- um, Yeah, it's okay now. It's down, it's down now. Okay, great. It seems okay. <laughs> If you guys just put comments in the chat over here, sometimes I had struggle to keep track of the Q and A and the chat. Um, yep. So it's a little easier to just run it on the chat. Um, today, Robin Hood is joining me once again. Um, if you don't know Robin, I'm going to let her give you a little bit of an introduction, just in case, because you know <laughs> I'm sure. I, mean, I still find people that don't know Linda. I'm sure there's lots of people who don't know who I am. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, my name's Robin Hood, and I always promise people that I did not bring a bow and arrow. <laughs> Not that it matters on this. Uh, so Linda Tellington Jones is my sister, and I've had the opportunity of doing this work for 38 years. And it's really fun because I'm always learning, and I'm at home. I just came in from the farrier, and we have about 50 Icelandics on our farm and some other horses as well. Oh, Tasmania. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and... Um, yeah, so I love this, and you know, I've known Wendy for forever, like forever. 86. I, since 86, yeah. yeah. And so it's really fun. Um, it's just fun to be able to connect. And I started when she first, I heard, first heard about the Surefoots, it was, I was always, I'm always interested in kind of new things. And it's been really fantastic for me to see the development of it. And I had the opportunity last summer, we had the opportunity to spend five days together up here and videotaped all the work we did with, uh, with some horses. And it was, I don't know if we want to show some of this stuff with Shiner. One of the things that I was thinking about this is how, like, how do I use it? How do I use this with T-Touch? And I think that one of the things is that because it gives you so much information about how a horse is moving or when a horse is sticky or where a horse may be falling into onto one side it it actually is such a, a good observation tool and as you're doing it it actually helps to shift the horse and i think that that's the i think that's one of the one of the most valuable things about the work not to mention it's one of the very few things we do with horses where we we don't train them to do it we, we kind of offer what they can do. And in that offering, it tells us so much about what they can and can't do. And, and I think that's, um, I, I think that makes it so unique in the horse world because we're always trying to somehow, whether it's nice or not nice, coerce our horses into doing something that, you know, that, that is it for our benefit. And, and so yeah. I found that if you can stand a horses or maybe you're having a little, like maybe you're noticing your horse is a little stiff on one side or they're as in this case with shiner difficult for the farrier what happens is by doing the surefoot it it just really gives you information and then the horse gets that information about what they can do so they start to trust it and they start to trust you yep and you know it's really interesting robin because my horse al is probably one of the horses that's the least interested in surefoot <laughs> Um, but I have to say, and he's always been like this, he has massive frogs. And now that I had Bob's lecture the other, other day, I realized his frog stay is huge. And so he has a really, really good foot. And he's always been very, very nimble on his feet and very aware of where his feet are going. Um, yeah. I had um, oh, um, Larry Whitesell, who does gated horses, yeah. and yeah. he got some sure foot pads. And he sent me a message and he said, the horses that really need it want it, and the horses that don't seem to need it so much are not as interested. And I think yeah. Al is in that sort of department that he he doesn't need it so much because he's got such a good foot and he knows where he is in space. I mean, and there was days when he, I mean, I've done videos with him and he's been totally chilling. But like yesterday I went to the barn and I said, oh, I'm gonna do surefoot with my horse. And I was like, no, 
no, no <laughs> thanks, not today. And so, you know, that's okay. That's part of the process of listening. And it, yeah. like, sometimes you want to go and go to a movie and see a really nice, you know, like, family movie, but maybe today you want to go see an action film. And so you're not so interested in doing things slowly and standing around and, and that's okay. And that's one of the things about Surefoot and the, and the giving the horse a voice and a choice that there, some days they're going to say, no, I don't really feel like this. And that is totally okay. Yeah. Um, but the horses that really, really need it seem to really, really want it. And Shiner, I just loved because why don't you tell a little bit about Shiner's background and I'll just yeah. put a picture of so it. So Shiner came off the BLM um, and he was, uh, he was actually supposed to be a dude horse at, um, at the Bitterroot Ranch. And Mandy worked there for a few years in the summers as a wrangler and working with their young horses. And so she ended up taking China was not going to make it as a dude horse. Um, and so she um, ended up taking him and bringing him home. And he's now in his teens. Uh, he, he's, uh, uh, you know, a, he's an interesting sort of way that I guess lots of, lots of Mustangs are is he can be like over rooted to the ground, but then sometimes things can really scare him. And, and that's something that is, um, but picking up his feet was one of those things that, it, it, he wasn't being disobedient or whatever. It was just like his feet were rooted to the ground. And we have a great farrier. And he was, you know, he just took his time with, with Shiner and, and so on. And you could do leg circles with him once you got his feet up. <laughs> it was just, it didn't really make it that much easier for him to pick his feet up. Um, if we, if you, actually, if you're, if, if you go to day one, two, I think that's what it is, was his first introduction to the pads uh day one yeah that day one like so that's it shiner is shiner too and it but it's it's not until about maybe you can run it forward to uh -oh. it's like sort of 12 oh, minutes it crashed. It. it crashed because it tried to use the wrong program and i i had oh yeah okay program. all right that's okay i can just i just yeah, yeah. tell it how to open so the interesting thing is too is shiner would be kind of going around and I, we might see a little bit of him moving, but really stuck at the base of his neck. And because it, he was so tight in the shoulders, probably he really would prefer to canter rather than to trot. And he, but well, he, he actually, held himself like up at the base. Well, actually, his foot got stuck to the ground. And so when that foot got stuck, the other one was coming up. And so he broke into the canter. Yeah. Not because he was trying to canter. It's just right. because he got stuck. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, somebody just said maybe that's part of why Buck doesn't want them. And I'm not 100% sure that that's always true because I would say that, like, for instance, Blyther, the horse that we worked with, he really, he could really use them, but he just can't do it. You know what I mean? In, in, right. in his case. So, so there's, I, there's different reasons. Yeah. And I think you have to take each horse as an individual and to look at why. I know with Al um, that he's always been very sure-footed and that's why I have him. Um, yeah. But there are other reasons, absolutely. And I'm just going to back this up because there was that little hippie hop. Yeah. Oh, you know what? So... We're not being. We're not seeing the video. We're just seeing your. Um... Oh, hang on. Yeah. yeah. I'll just yeah. Uh, let me reshare the right screen. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's Sometimes it's always it a tricky the... bit. There we go. Um, yeah. Okay. So there you go. I'm going to back this up. And there you see it a little, but right here, there's yeah. that little hippie hop into canner. And it's not that he's trying to canter, it's that he gets so stuck in the trot. Yeah. I can slow that down. I don't know if I have the option speed control on these videos. That's a little bit past it there. I'll just let this run for a minute. Yeah, sure. But you, you can see how he pulls himself up through the base of the neck. Uh, well, can we see the original? I'm not sure somebody's asking, can we see the original? original what that is this is the beginning this is like day one right this isn't day one film one do you want me to go to day one film one it is no no because that was just because it because we just it was all watching him move but i was interested to see when you when he we start to introduce the pads let me see if i can change the speed on this oh you mean that you started with slow motion oh i see yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't start with slow motion, but I'm just checking to see if. Oh, there was the canner. Okay. Yeah. And you see, he's just he's really he doesn't he, he's yeah he falls into canter. He gets stuck into canter in a way. Yep. Oh, I see. I somehow I advanced this. That's what I did. 
Let's just go back to the trot a little bit here. So the, the question is, how do we know which pads to use and which to use for what? Well, this is one of the reasons I wanted to use um, Shiner is because he, because we go through a lot of the use of different pads and trying to figure out which pads for him, because there, there is no exact recipe. There's a kind of guidelines is what kind of, but, and then you have to tweak it. And Robin, one of the things I want to point out to everybody is look at how much dust cloud. I'm going to just yeah. take that back for a second. And Robin, if you can handle the chat, I'm going to close it. Yeah, on yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. then I can do video yeah. management. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. So he came around here and he's trotting around. So just look at the dust, especially the kicking up from the back foot. And when a yeah. horse is kicking up that much dust, in other words, if they're landing with a heel first, landing nice or flat, they're not going to be kicking up dust, but you can see how he suddenly starts to disappear in the dust cloud. And this yeah. is one of the things that we really noticed um, is just how much dust he kicked up as he moved. And you can see that the really tightness of the base of the neck. And also if I can stop that for a second, you know, you don't see a lot of movement through the elbow. In other words, his knee does not come up very high. So he's not bending in the elbow and lifting his knee. He's kind of just, dragging his foot through. And yeah, you, can, you can see that his, his front feet kind of drag, the toes drag a little bit too. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and here you can see, if I just stop it for a second, this, this really thick under neck, the forward chest, yeah. the hollow back position, right? And then, I don't know if I can catch the next part of the stride. You know, he's just th that really thickness and that his foot is already coming down, but it hasn't even really gotten to his nose. Yeah. You know, so he's not stepping to his nose. He's, if anything, I talk about how the, the nose is coming back to the foot instead of the foot reaching to the nose. Right. <clears throat> and we're going to just change direction here. So we'll watch him go a little bit the other direction, Robin. And so, it, I mean, he's lived with you for how long? Uh, probably at least 10 years because we, um, uh, at least that, and he's one of those, um, it, he's one of those horses that because we have, well, we only have 50 horses now, we used to have like 150. Uh, so because he wasn't, we, we sold a lot of horses. So he, he was a horse that is kind of like the cobbler's children where he would be ridden, but not, he wasn't worked really, really consistently. Right. So, um, that was interesting. Um, so there were some more questions here. And oh, you, I see. I'm not allowed at my barn due to the core. Okay, virus, flat property, or does it matter? So when does it matter where we use the pads? No. no. You you can use them wherever the horse is comfortable and it's safe to. I mean, right. It it doesn't matter what kind no. of footing you're on. It doesn't matter. You just want an open space when you start because if you don't know how your horse is going to respond, you don't want to be in a stall. You yeah. want to be at least in a barn aisle or maybe outside in a paddock or an open space yeah. to allow him to move off because a lot of horses walk off in the beginning and you're supposed to let them do that because that shows that they're not necessarily balanced or it's yeah. disturbing their balance. And that's kind of what we want to know. Okay. So have we seen if, enough if, of that? Yeah. If you go, just go forward to, to 12 minutes, like just fast forward yeah. a little bit. I'll make everybody a little bit. Oh, we start. Okay. Yeah, awesome. yeah. How did it go that way? How come it went backwards? Because uh, I moved it backwards because I went too oh, okay. far. <laughs> uh, so you here, actually, if you watch this walk, and I'm just going to play, because I can scrub these videos forward and back a little bit, Robin. Yeah. If you watch this walk, you see how short strided he is and how he lifts his head and neck up and back. In other words, the pole moves up and back to move his front foot forward. Can you yeah. see that? And then, of course, yeah. he hollows out into the stop, right? And so here he's got his pole moving up and back. And whenever you see the pole moving up and back, the horse is shortening the top line instead of lengthening. When you see the pole moving forward down, he's lengthening his top line. It's a really simple way to know. Yeah. So another question was, does he, um, if you, um, should you clean their feet before you uh, pick up, to put them on the pads to um, increase the sensation? Necessary. Yeah. It's the same as the, they can have shoes on too. So you've got the same, yep. you know, the same sort of thing that's happening. Yep. So it's not necessary. If you want to see a print of the internal structures, you can clean the foot, but it is not required that you clean the foot. Yeah. Okay. So we're obviously chatting. So now, so what's going to happen is you're just going to bring it up and you're going to see 
what he yes. would do. Now, normally in that point, when you dropped it on the ground, he would, he could have at times re like really startled and maybe spun a little bit. So, um, so I'm just going to take this back a second because the, you guys had all told me, uh, you know, he's a Mustang and he can be a little bit flighty. And so before I ever got close to him, I wanted to see his reaction because I don't want to be bending down trying to pick up a foot if he's reacting. Right. And, and you don't want already, somebody on the horse if he's going to be re really be reactive. Correct. Right. I would take them off. And you can see that um, Mandy's trying to ask him to put his neck down, which he's not doing. And his, he's already spotted the pad. And here I'm approaching. And I'm just coming with a half physio pad, which is the really low profile pad. Right. And that look, this look, this yeah. eye, this ear, this nostril. If you see that in a horse, you need to slow down. You need to <laughs> yeah. either... Uh, and I did that on purpose to kind of see his reaction yeah. um, and from a good enough distance and everybody was aware of what I was going to do. But yeah. when you see this kind of reaction, you need to back up, slow down, you know, do half as much um, because this is already a signal that he is not okay with that pad. Yeah. Right. Uh, and somebody is, also just uh, mentioned that because Dr. Boker said that the dirt, that dirt pad was important and functional and not to scrape it out. Huh. Yeah, and the dirt pad is the plug. He talks about the plug and it's distributing the weight. So, right. you know, I mean, sometimes I clean out a foot because I want to see what the structures of the foot are doing in relation yeah. to the pad. And other times I'll, I'll leave it. I, like if I'm working with a horse like this, I'm not going to clean out his feet. Yeah. So, so were we, body wraps ever used? In this case, we did not use body wraps. And the reason we didn't is we were just wanting to see if we just used the pads, um, what like what was the response because if you had too many things you you can't know but i have had horses wear body wraps while standing on the pads um so the other question was why would a horse why would the horse be nervous around the pads well for many horses like i think for this horse anything that happened on the ground it was actually worse things happening down low were kind of worse for him and it's just how some horses are, you know. It's well, and we we never know the uh, background of a horse fully. We never right. really know his total history, even if we've owned them, because something happens right. out in the field. Um, yeah. And so, just like people, something may have happened that that this triggers a memory and a response. And um, it, you know, it could have been a snake that was out in the wild when he was a, you know, a wild sure. mustang. And so we can't understand why they react, but we need to observe that they do. Yeah, and then exactly. we need to respond oh, accordingly. Yeah. So question was whether body wraps had been used, period. To be honest, Cheryl, I don't remember. We have too many horses. <laughs> yeah. So the thing to notice here is he's, here's some fooling around. Yeah, right? absolutely. So I dropped the pad on the ground. We took Mandy off. But this is anxiety. And mm -hmm. often people write this off as, oh, my horse is just being bad or, oh, he's just being whatever. But this is actually anxiety. And he's self-distracting by going after the rain. Absolutely. Okay. And so you can see that he's, yep, and see that response, like he was distracting, chewing on the rain, so yeah. he wasn't aware of what was going on. And the minute I kicked the pad, look at these nostrils, look at that stance, look at the ears and eyes. So this is really the message to slow down and back up. And I'm sure that's what I did. I wanted to see yeah. uh, what was going to happen in a, in a way where I'm still safe and he's not on the pad, right? Yeah. So that's kind of the idea here is... If we see this reaction, and I've showed so many videos of horses on pads where this does not happen, that it's really important to see what it's like when it does, right? And right. so what you notice is I kicked it away, and he kind of startled when I kicked it away, and then I kick it further away. But look at how, when I got it far enough away, he got curious enough to drop his neck, and then I go and stand and jump on the <laughs> pad and look at him. He's like, oh, wait a second. What are you doing? And then yeah. here, and this is something a lot of people go, why are you doing that? Horses touch objects with their feelers and they check it out with their feelers. So I'm just demonstrating to him that I'm feeling this pad and that I think it's okay. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. There's look, I'm touching it and look at his expression Right. And then I yeah, say, yeah. would you like to touch it? And before he touches it, I take it away. Yeah. In other words, I want him curious, but I don't want him to scare himself. And if I let him touch it at that moment, he might be a little too committed and scare himself. So I just say, no, sorry. You know, and yeah. then I let him think about it. I repeat that process. I offer and I take it away. And you look at the nostril flare right here. When I do that again, right, yeah. there's our nostril flare. So right there. So 
part of that is sniffing it, but part of that is a kind of a nervous when you see the, I've forgotten what the, what the false nostril is called. It's the false nostril, <laughs> right? You see that kind of flaring right, right up here. Bell, at the, top the, bell, the, the top of the bell. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that. Okay. And then he puts his neck down, right? And looks away. And that was awesome. He's like, okay. And so when he did that, I said, well, how would you like to smell it? And you see the nostril flare. And then again, I take it away and let him think about it. And I put myself between the horse and the pad so that he starts to look at me as somebody who's going to keep him safe. <clears throat> right. And then moving him a little, but moving him away from the pad, not toward the pad. And so I just do this process of offering and taking away and offering. And now when I drop it, we don't see a startle. He licks and chews a little bit. Right. And here I'm telling everybody, look, I've got my hand on my back with the rein, so I only have one hand to work with yeah. to keep myself safe. So I don't have to bend over very far. I pick up the foot and I wait. And you see, he shifted his balance. Wow, Robin, this is awesome. I've actually not looked at this film. <laughs> this is great. But watch, he shifts his balance right there, but he's still stuck. Yeah, he hasn't been totally. able to lift the leg. So yeah. I take my hand away and I say, hey, wow, that was awesome. You gave me uh, the idea, right? You said, right. okay, yeah. right? Look at the lick, the blinking, the softer face. And I just wait. And then I ask again. And you can and you see, see it is that whole thing is, it's like what he's done is we, people keep asking and they don't allow that pause for him to actually shift his weight. And this is what is, this is showing so well. A question came up is why this pad? Well, this pad is the least, it's, it's smaller. It's a little bit um, thinner than, than the regular pads. This is a half physio and, and it's quite dense. So it's not going to have a lot of give when he does step on it. Right. Uh, it's, it's the most stable and right. um, I don't want him to feel a lot of give. That would yeah. scare him, right? So I asked a couple of times and then I, I yak at everybody and I just tell him, hey, that was awesome, right? And look at his face, he's kind of like, oh. And then I take him away to let him go, oh wow, you asked me, but you didn't make me, you didn't force me and you, you gave me a choice and I'm letting him think about it. And, I, and my example is always, if you flush the toilet, you can't flush it again until it refills. Yeah. <laughs> right. Great analogy. Yeah. Great analogy. The, the horse's brain only runs on glucose. So yeah. when you exhaust the glucose in the brain, they cannot process. Right. And all they're going to do is be driven to the, the habits that take the least amount of energy at that point, which in this case is to get stuck. Yeah. So by taking him away, I let the brain refresh. I let some more glucose get to the brain. You know, I'm just yakking away, doing little forelock pulls there. And you can see he likes that. There's my lick and chew. And there he comes forward. And so you can see he's dropped a tiny little bit. But that willingness to step forward for me and realize, okay, I'm not going to keep demanding that you do this. I'm just going to give you a little break, little ear strokes. Yeah. Right. And this is where you can combine some of the team ideas, especially yeah. with a nervous horse like this. And then he goes to scratch his belly and, you know, makes a mistake, you know, kind of gets stretched. But look at his tail lift there. And, you know, when we talked to Sharon Wilsey the other day, she says, when you see something in the tail, it's like the thought has completed itself. And so now he comes forward and look, he actually puts his head down at the pad, look at the expression in the face touch the pad with his nose. So he's kind of like, oh, well, nothing bad happened. So maybe this is okay. And look at how much, wow. Like when I go to ask him to pick up his leg, look at how much he has to shift his whole yeah. body right there. He had, he's driven this foot down into the ground, the right front. Yeah. He's, he's, his whole rib cage is bulged over to me. I mean, sorry, away from me. Away from you, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's what he has to do to pick up his left front foot. So you can imagine under saddle, if it takes that much to move his left front foot, what is he going to do under saddle? He's certainly not going to lift his back. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And so now he's, uh, he's standing on the pad. There's a little tail swish. I'm just going to move this so that you can see the face. The ear is soft. He reaches forward and kind of checks me out a little bit. The neck has come down. So by giving him just a couple minutes of, acknowledging you're a little worried to go for a walk. This is a very different experience this time. And you notice that he stepped off, which is totally fine. They're allowed to step off when they're ready. Um, in this, some cases, if they don't even stay on it, right? And I, 
and the stickiness in, in leading him forward, that is part of his pattern, right, Robin? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, he just absolutely. stops moving. Yeah. <laughs> so the stickiness is not, uh, it's actually a, a, a adverse response here that he has is like kind of just getting stuck. And then and Robin, I think you offered him some water. water. Yeah, because when you talked about glucose, that's one of the things is, you know, we forget in training sessions with our horses to give them water. We wait till they're done. And it's so important when they're, if they're using that to the, the water. And the first time he didn't drink much and then we took it away, I offered again, and then he drank a lot. Yep. So that's the end of that video. Yeah. So then on what I actually then did, if you go to day two, Okay. Um, the, I think three minutes into it is when we 2.1 day two, 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 day two, two. Yeah. Yeah. It just, he was so interesting in, in this, this whole process because he's nervous, but he's that internal until he's, until he's not, but he recovers quickly. Like most Mustangs do. It's best for their survival if they do that. But it was pretty quick because the session, that session we did with them really was maybe not quite an hour in total. Yeah, yeah then totally she's reintroducing all the filming before and everything. Yeah, so. and this is like reintroducing the pads with a rider on. So this is the second day. This is I'm the in second a day. Shirt. Okay, and I'm starting with the same half physio pad. So, you know, when I make a major change, like put a rider back uh, on the horse or something, I want to decrease the in, the degree of demand. Um, yeah. If I went to a really unstable pad by making a change and putting a rider, that's a huge shift. And putting a rider on is a big demand on the horses. So um, I'll just let this play. I offer him the pad. You can see I, he checks it out. You can see his expression is totally different and this foot's pretty darn stuck. I think yeah. this was the more stuck foot. Yeah. And yeah. so I said, okay, your foot's stuck to the ground. No problem. Can you lift another foot? And then he says, you know, yeah, I can lift my left front, but I can't lift my right front. And you know, that's the thing is we, it's really important not to get um, sort of stuck in. This is what he has to do. Exactly. It's, it's really exactly. what can you do? Not what, do you, what you have to do. It's what can you do? And, well, and you know, the only way we can actually have horses learn to trust is we have to earn trust. You don't take it. And it was, um, I mean, it, it's interesting because the, the, those pauses are so important so that they have the chance. I mean, the, the processing of the nervous system happens in the pause, not in the doing. And when we take it away from something that's difficult, it's like, oh, you listen to me. And, you know, in, the, in general, in the horse world, people are taught not to listen because yeah. they have an agenda of what they need to do. So uh, the question was that the first day session was quite short. Um, would I use one pad and increase the time every day? You know, that also depends on the horse. We, we did, on day one, we did a couple of different sessions with him, but they were, I think we did two... They're made I, I, we did I an hour I in total. Tried all four feet, but did not accomplish a pattern. Right, that's all right. I offered all four feet the first day, but didn't didn't get them. So and you you can see here he he went to try and figure out how to pick up the right front, which is the yep. most stuck foot, and then he couldn't figure it out. So I just went, all right. I must have done all each foot individually the day before. Yeah. Because I wouldn't have gone to a second foot with a rider on if I hadn't kind of checked that out already. Yeah, but, and, he, and he, had quite a, he had quite a hard time the first, I don't think he actually um, had all four feet on, on any pad the first day. But I've seen no, that. He, did, I'm sure I mean, he, he didn't have all, he, did, he had a pad under each foot, but I don't think all four feet. No, no, I don't actually think he got a pad necessarily under all four feet. He might have, but no, anyway, it doesn't well, matter. Are you talking individually? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He didn't, okay. I, I'm not sure. I know you, you asked him, but, and I'm not sure. And the point is, it doesn't matter. They can, that's right. when, you know, you ask it, they can't do it. So you go on to something else. So did you all see how, I'm going to back this up. Yeah. You could see, and, and again, I'm kind of tying in some of the other lectures, like yeah, Bob it's Lecture interesting. Insurance. To see which, the release of the tail. That's right. So you see the eye blinking, the softening, the ears listening internally, the, the mouth is not going for the reins, the, the little breathing change right there, the eye blink, then you see some, something happening. I think it's a little wind blowing his forelock there, right? Then he turns his head, big breath, another big breath. You can see how that's moving Mandy and you can see back here in the back ribs that as we see this nostril flare and there's our tail lift and yeah. our neck drop. Yeah, interesting. And Sharon talks about that's like the thought completes itself with that little tail movement. 
Yeah, interesting. Uh, so there was the other question is, why did you go to a different pad when you the one pad was working? Um, you know, why wouldn't you have stayed? What would have you stayed with, say, so the we, half physio? So we haven't played all of day one. And yeah. I'm so I, I and I can't recall. I think I probably worked with the half physio and asked under each foot. Yeah. But yeah. now I've moved to a slant and I may have done that the day before and I've moved to the hard slant heel high. And so yeah. I'm just offering him two pads. But again, you see, he's not all the way back up on the, on the height of the wedge. Right. And it's on this diagonal, which was easier to pick up the other diagonal. And I recall that the left hind was also really difficult to pick up. Yeah. That diagonal was just really like glued to the ground. Yeah, but you can see now see his whole body shift and then he chooses to step off Right, and then yeah. we give him a little minute and then ask him if to go for a walk yeah. And the walk is giving them an opportunity to process the piece of information. Yeah um, so and much of our Processing happens in the rest. Yeah, we'll so that one of the questions was well Why did you add a rider if it was more demanding for him? Um, and and we did the first day did everything without the rider to start with did asked all the, the feet um, What we were interested in doing here too is to see the change that happens under saddle by simply using some of these pads and Remember that we're not mad at him if it's he can't do it We're just going to keep making it easier for him if he couldn't do it Right, so and the, the other reason for doing this with a rider is two one notice that he can walk and the rider can ask him to continue to walk And how stuck we saw him the day before and the yeah. movement look at what's happening in the movement here in terms of his head and neck so being yeah. able to ask him to move on without like having to chase him on a lunge line or something like that a lot of times if you have a rider on you can ask the horses to continue to move easily and it's that movement that's so important to integrate what they experience from the pad yeah the, the other reason is that i wanted mandy to be able to feel all the changes and you can see she's talking to us she's reporting back to us everything she felt and there's so many things that we wouldn't actually see but a rider will feel and so it's an additional huge piece of feedback that we got from working with this horse yeah well so and it's that, not and a punishment it's actually the changes the rider's perspective of the horse when they yeah. feel what he does standing on pads it's really yeah. it's so awesome and notice how easy it was to pick up that foot that time yeah well and, so, and i think that it's you know we do lots of things with horses from like from the ground and then we do things under saddle and this kind of to me also combines it for them so that you're making that bridge because in a way this is a little bit like body work with a rider on them i mean absolutely and you know, you know one of the things i always tell people robin is what do you like when you visit your mother and what do you like when you visit your friends yeah and so if we only do surefoot in the environment of the barn or the stable or without a rider that's like going to the spa and it's great i'm not saying it's not great it's great yeah. But so many horses have habits under saddle. So many yeah. horses have habits the minute you put the tack on or take them into the arena. And yeah. what we want to do here is help him form new patterns and new ideas in terms of being ridden that feel comfortable and he can feel a new way of carrying himself under the rider. And yeah. so if you don't address those habits in that environment, you're not going to change them. You, you actually have to address them. And this is a great way to do it. And of course, one of the other questions is why the wedge in the front? As so, you've got a wedge in the back and the front. I just love the slant pads and heel high because I want to, I think about softening the joints a little bit and giving a little more heel support. Um, I find a lot of horses really, really like it. And it's totally okay that he's resting his toe. In fact, it's kind of nice because he's relaxing all through this hip line. And you can look at his face. And obviously now I'm actually going to add another slant and i only had i guess two hard slants so i'm going to use a firm slant right so i'm going to mix it up a little bit and this is one of the feet that was so hard for him to pick up and you yeah. can see just it's like picking up a telephone pole yeah, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know but the fact that he actually even could give that to me was really amazing mm. and often you'll find that by using the pads under one foot it makes another foot easier to pick up I think because it helps them stabilize. So the question always is, is it the foot that you're trying to lift that's the problem or is yeah. it the foot that they have to stand on that's the problem? And in many cases, it's the foot that they have to stand on. 
So if we give that foot a pad, they can stand on it in greater comfort and then they're willing to give us the other foot. And look at his face, his eyes are nearly shut. I yeah. know there's some more questions there, Robin, if you can. I uh, know it's just the same question, but it's, I haven't had a question before that it's one we answered. Okay. It, it's, right. um, but you so, see, look at the eyes, look at the breathing, look at the lips softening, look at how much lower the neck is. Now, when Mandy moves the reins, you see that little bit of tension come back. But I asked her to put the reins in front of the shoulder line because I find if you have it crossing the shoulder, it restricts horses in the neck. Right. So right. just laying the rein in front of the shoulder seems to make a huge difference. And that's any time. Yeah. Um, just putting the rein a little bit more forward. Yeah, well, and think of how much longer, see, on the first day, he couldn't stand on any of the pads for very long. That's okay. He, he was just allowed to move off. And now, I mean, Mandy's not asking him to stand there. He, he's making that choice to stand there. Yep. So what I'll do is I'll just forward, there's eight more minutes of this, so I'll just go. Yeah, 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 no, don't worry. Because then if we go to the, if you go to day two dash three at 106, he's on, on soft pads, which is right. really interesting to okay. have gone from. So let me just, as I go forward with this, just watch how much his body does move, even though it seems like he's not. You can see the little sway. Oh, this is important. Let me just, yeah. okay. So again, th these horses that have that little bit of uncertain in them, he, he fell into like a relaxed mindset, right? And there he let his neck down and he took a breath and then he stepped back on the pad and suddenly he's like, whoa, what, whoa, what's that? And then he felt the one behind. And so this is where, you know, we already saw that in this horse from day one. And this was just a downgraded version of it. But this is something when you see those horses cocking ear, always keep that in mind when you're working with them. Well, and, and the, the thing that's interesting is just his recovery rate. Yes. And then like he, he totally recovered. He didn't keep going. And part of it is because Mandy didn't really react. You yeah, know, she that was really important. Reins. She, she just kind of, you know, stayed with him. Yep. Um, and then I just showed him the pads, didn't, didn't um, make him stand on another pad, just showed him the pads, and then we just waited and watched him. He's going to, he licked and chewed, and then he needed to go for a walk, and then you just let him go for a walk, right? So that he realizes, oh, no big deal. It's not chasing me. It's not going to get worse. It's all okay. Right? So now let's reduce that screen size. I'm going to pause my screen share here. And get uh, what day did you want, Robin? You uh, want it's in? still day two, but it dash three because it's when then he was on the, at one oh six. He's on the soft pads, which was just so interesting because sometimes it's harder for uh, you know the Mustangs wanting wanting a solid ground, and he is was really seemed to be quite accepting of the. Yeah, uh, and I, I will say that as a group, Mustangs that have been on the range are a little more wary of surefoot pads because. Their life depended, I'm gonna kill the sound, their life depends on being careful about what they step on. Could be a bog, could be a snake, could be a hole. So it's not unusual to see the Mustangs that have been in the wild be more suspicious of the pads in general. So the question was how many days before we saw a change? Well, you saw day one was with the, the pads. We worked a total of an hour each day, and this is day two. And, um, and I have to say that his, so she, Wendy was there five days. He got really tired by the end, by the end of it. So we were doing way shorter sessions because that's quite a lot. Um, and he still to this day is much, much easier to pick up his feet. And you haven't really done anything? No, haven't, no, I haven't done anything. Listen, we're just, we just got rid yeah. of most of You're our You're too snow. busy doing other things, right? So I've switched to the soft pad. It flipped over onto the softest side or I purposely. Yeah. I guess I flipped it over, which yeah. I wanted to give him as much softness as possible. Now watch again, when he goes to pick up this left front foot, I just want you to watch. So when I'm picking up a front foot, a lot of times I'm watching how the weight is distributed amongst the other feet because I can see them from that position, yeah. right? And you saw how he really still has to shift his body so much and he really had to push into that pad there. But now well, he can actually do it. Well, I was going to say, because he picked his right front foot up first this time, which he hadn't been a really so much able to do. And, um, and the, one of the things that's, I think, really important in the way that you, how you pick up the feet, 
by not leaning into them, which is sadly how so many people are taught to pick up feet, which all that does is trigger the opposition reflex, is you ask and then you wait for him to shift the weight. They have to reorganize the other three feet so they can pick up one foot. Yes. And in balance. So often you'll see that they actually have to move a foot Absolutely. in order to pick up the one because they have to make a bigger uh, area of stance because yeah. they're not capable of staying square and picking up a foot. Yeah. And, and the all. only way they can move that other foot is if you give them a pause to do it. Correct. You know, so, but you see, he's perfectly, he's perfectly happy standing on that those pads. In fact, you took him off the pads, I guess, so he wouldn't scare himself. That's correct. I yeah. took him off because we, we had seen him scare himself. And so this is one, something you can always do if you have any concern about the horse is just go ahead and especially if you see that little kind of cocked face expression that we saw is that you just go in and you just take their foot off the pad so they don't have to push on it to move forward. And then they're, they get to like go, oh, there's the earth again and I can walk away. Your driving horses will not walk away because they're taught to stand. Your Amish horses also, you've got to be right. kind of cognizant of certain horses that have been told they must stand until told to do otherwise. And you can see I'm a little bit concerned, like, where do I go here? And then he got himself sorted out. But watch the walk now. So this is day two. We've maybe been at it. We did a, not really an hour the day before. It's probably more like 45 minutes of actually yeah. using pads. And now this is day two. And if you think about the walk that we saw on day one with the neck always moving up and back, we now have the pole moving forward, down, forward, down, forward, down, forward, down. So the stride still, there's up and back, there's forward, down. So we see him vacillating between the two concepts. The horses will literally experiment with the old place and the new place, which my riders refuse to do. Yeah. <laughs> they always argue with me. But the horses are so good at doing that and doing com what I call comparison shopping until they decide which one feels easier. That's what their nervous system is designed to do is to sense ease and then go with ease. So look at the difference in the top line here. And, just and, and the kicking dirt. That's, oh, yeah. That, that, was, that's, that was the other thing Penny said. Yeah. Yep. So it just, it's, it's so interesting. And when, when you say like the day before we didn't use the pads for an hour, we had them out there for an hour using the pads for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, maybe total. Maybe. Yeah. Like actually standing on the pads. That's yeah. right. Yeah. The rest yeah. of the time he's walking, he's trotting, he might be cantering, but the actual time on the pads is interspersed with movement when you do yeah what I call a session, which is what we're doing here, is just using the surefoot pads. Yeah, so now there, there is either you can go to two, four where the head is released, although it showed quite well there, or if you go to three dash three, it shows them on, um, on all four pads. And again, this was just in- This is day three. Yeah, you're gonna go to day three and then dash three. Yep, that's where we are. Okay, so, cause well, you were on page, you were on two, three. Three, now three. you're going to go to three. Oh, sorry. You can't see my screen. Hang on. I cannot. <laughs> um, so some, somebody said uh, we spend a lot of time learning about and reading children's cues so we can teach them more effectively by responding to the child's following lead. Yeah. Um, so they're finding this fascinating and children are able to learn when you teach them or meet them where they are, of course. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of using, oh, your reading of the body language as a way of teachers increasing their uh, awareness of how they read, It'd be fantastic, uh, fantastic. And the, and the pads for, yeah. for yes. people are amazing, yeah. you know, are like, it's, it's incredible. So you see there, we've got, it may be flies. Mandy's kind of checking to see if it's flies. He's on soft pads in front with the slants behind. Oh, there was birds flying overhead. You saw the shadows. Um, you can see this very thoughtful face, little tail squish, um, could be processing, could be flies, right? But you see how the, he's like looking at me and suddenly he's looking at me like, what are you doing? Oh, I think I put shims on her stirrup. Yeah, no, you did. Yeah, I yeah. did. Okay. So, so I'm now I'm starting to mess with Mandy and I'm starting yeah. to do her shims, <laughs> right? So I'm just kind of doing tiny, not trying to do too much with Mandy because I don't want to skew the experiment, right. but look at his facial expression when I approach him and yeah. think about what it was on day one. Well, and look at how, how differently he's standing. Like right. he's standing much more with a leg towards each corner than being skewed. Like he tends to not stand so much in balance. And I have not used any food with this horse at all. 
No. Right. So there we get a. So he saw me walk over, and then we get a lick and chew. The horses associate you with the comfort of the pads, and so I'm just going to fast forward past putting the shin. Yeah. On. <laughs> do, do, do. Um, I'm just kicking stuff out of the way and yakking. Let's just see what happens. Here we go. Yep. Okay, and remember how he startled off before, right? There he let his neck down, but look, he, get, he licks and chews. Lick and chew is a dopamine hit. They've done studies that when you get that dopamine, you get a saliva release, which causes the lick and chew. Look at the eye blinks, the soft ears, the internal observation of, by the horse, right? Look at the softness that we see here. Yeah, very nice. The softness all in front of the shoulder and the base of the neck. And he thought about walking off and he stopped, right? And then there we go. And look at how he steps off now compared to what we saw when he startled off. I, I think he was trying to figure out how to get off them like in an organized way. <laughs> yes. And, and you can still see there's an awkwardness in his movement here. I mean, if you watch his little bum right there, there's right. a bit of awkwardness. There's not a nice one, two, three, four rhythm yet, but look at the lack of dust clouds. So. Yeah. Um, it did not rain in between. No. So the, this and is and we did not arena. water the arena in between. Right. It was very dry and hot. Yes, it was. It was <laughs> yeah. very dry and hot. And so watering it wouldn't have done any good anyway. But now there's a little bit of dust, but there's significantly less yeah. dust. Like she's gone into a heavier area of the arena. Yeah, it's much deeper there. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to move this forward a little bit. So there, oh, there oh, were... That's um, Look at this walk. Yeah, this is nice, isn't it? Look at that neck. This is where I, I need to put it in some other program to do the side by side. Yeah, it would be very interesting. I might have some coaches eye video in my files here. I think I, I moved them over onto this computer. But just look at the direction of the head and neck moving forward, down, for a little, little puffy, right? Forward, down, forward, down. And so now the foot's starting to reach much more toward the nose. Oh, and we're gonna go to pods. So this is day three, right, Robin? This was day three, and I'm not sure if we do pads, pods here. We may, maybe we did, because then, then the next, well, the next thing we did with him, we did one riding one, and then you did one in the, um, in the covered arena. arena of him just completely free. But here, just here, yeah. look at yeah. the difference in the neck muscling and the softness. Of, yeah, I'm going to do pods. The yeah. softness at the base of the neck, right? So I just... Drop the pod where his foot is. I remember from day one when I dropped something on the ground, what he was like. And now I'm messing around with a little half dome. And on the right the front. Right front, which yeah. uh, we couldn't move on day one. <laughs> and he checks, tests it out. It's totally fine. Steps off, licks and chews, no startle. Look at the facial reaction. Like, really, like, that's cool. Right? I ask him again and I wait. And watch his rear end. He had to reorganize and look at that stifle and what he had to do here on this left hind to give me that foot. Tests it, steps off, but does not leave, right? Mm -hmm. So he's kind of checking it out. He's not worried about it. He's not showing any anxious signs. Um, and he's exploring it, right? So I'm just kind of guiding the foot a little bit, aiming for the third row of dots with the toe of the foot. And I'm just going to see if he can stand on it. So that's like, I barely have my leg against his knee and a tiny little ask. And if I think of it as like, if five ounces gets it done, then it's okay. And if I have to do more than that, then it's not okay. Yeah. And five ounces is the weight of a nickel. Yeah. So it's really tiny, right? It's just like, I'm kind of encouraging him. Now he has to stand on the half dome on the right front and look at how easy he went on the left front, right? But you see, he's gone way to the heel on the right yeah. front. Yeah. But actually kind of nice here, pretty straight. Yeah. And look at his face. The question was, do you use it, like in terms of, you know, the question about whether you use it daily, weekly, monthly as maintenance. To be honest, we haven't done anything else with him since last July. And, um, but some people use it, use them quite regularly. You have, you have people who use them as their warm up instead of doing. Instead of lunging. Yeah. Yep. And cool down and just comfort. Um, I mean, you guys are busy doing lots of other things with lots of other horses. So it's right. not like you have the time to do it. And that's the beauty is that it, what we did with him is still lasting because people often ask, well, how long yeah. does this last? And yeah. we know that it can, one or two sessions can last for a very long time. But at the same time, a lot of horses like to see the pads on a regular basis. Yeah. Um, we have horses that were the first horses ever to be on surefoot pads from day one, and they're still enjoying surefoot eight years later. 
Right. So are they on them every day? No. And are there times when there's a break? Yeah. But do they come back and do it again or say something changed the horse? Excuse I me, mean, what's so interesting or? with him here, he's, he's standing so squarely, even though he was completely awkward on the pods and he could have left, he didn't. He just, you know, he, he just kind of, I, I feel like he's kind of going, well, nothing bad's going to happen. It's a bit weird, but yeah. you know, it, it's sort of, you know, kind of interesting. Yep. And you can see how easy, that, look at the licking and chewing yeah. that we got there, right? So when I got to the fourth foot and there he's like, well, where did you go? So, so I kind of talk about the invisible umbilical cord. A lot of horses, if you move too quickly, they'll follow you. So there's, right. there's a series of Fs that explain why horses leave the pads. Flies. So in Australia, the first time I got there and the yeah. horse walked off the pad and it was flies. Yeah. Fright. We've seen yeah. him go off when it's, he's frightened. Food. When they see their food or they think there's food. Right. Friends. When they see a buddy and they're like, hey, you know, and they kind yeah. of drive the car off the road. Um, follow, and in this case, almost followed me, and then finished. So uh, yeah. flies, cool. right, food, friends, follow, and finished. That's interesting. It, really yeah. interesting. Um, uh, Penny says, nice, uh, getting a nice stretch through the flexors. So that's, it is, and it's great when people point things out because you can only notice things that you're looking for. So it, it's, it's, this is really helpful. So now you're going to, I think this is a soft pad. No, uh, I think those are hard actually because you oh, have- Oh, you're right. They are hard because you're going to put a pod on top of it, I think. And you can see he takes his foot off yeah. and then I just reposition the pad to see, well, maybe I didn't get it in the right place. So a lot of times horses might step off because it's not where they want it or they need a second to think about it. And so I don't take the first no in this case as a no. I just went, oh, well, maybe, maybe I need to do something else, right? And so here I'm going to put a pot on top and I'm going to aim and you watch how I hold the leg to just aim. So my hand is nowhere near the foot and I just kind of guide it. And if it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. Right. And he's just pulling his leg up and I just go with it. And it's like, okay, so you didn't want to do that. You know, and that's okay. Right. But you notice that he didn't leave. He didn't go anywhere else. He's not objecting. He's just like, well, I don't know. And watch what he does with his balance. He has to shift his balance. So this is the third day. When you think about what we're doing here on the third day, um, with him just having some sleep in between, right? And can you imagine us doing this on the first day? Absolutely not. No. But by no. doing a little bit and giving him a break and then listening to him and going, okay, well, maybe you want something else. Let me offer you, I'm putting a soft pad on top of a hard pad. So I'm just I'm just trying to offer him differences here. I'm just trying to make him a little more aware. And remember, this is the leg I couldn't pick up on day one and actually the beginning of day two. And well, how actually, how he could stay as balanced as he could while you picked that up and he fell off the pad, but he didn't move. Right. Which so is pretty interesting. Yes. Somebody asked the question about which, which pad do you start with, which is always a common question. And I, although it, it depends on your horse, I think, I think, you know, if you're going to buy one set of pads for most people, firm is, a, would you say, yeah. hard? The rule of thumb is if the horse is nervous, anxious, unfit, injured, um, any kind of weakness or anxiety, you go to hard. And if, they're, if you're unsure, you start with half physio. Um, but if they're generally calm, they're like this horse, we started with hard and that was the right decision. We actually started with half physio because yeah. if we started with firm with this horse, it would have had too much lateral given, it would have scared him. Yeah. Um, and so this is a great example of why you would start, oh, I think I'm going to start doing the circle of pads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a horse that absolutely I had to start with half physio and then hard. But if your horse is generally calm, and I mean, you know, doesn't show you those ear cocks and eyes, accepts things is great, you know, not fussy about what he stands on. And you can start with firm because that has lateral and the beginning of lateral instability. So what I'm doing here is the sort of surefoot is an offer and the horses are allowed to choose. But what happens is the horses recognize the pads bring comfort. And so now I'm switching from an offer in the way of non-habitual and horse gets to decide to using the pads as positive reinforcement. 
And Shiner got to the point where he wanted to be on the pads. And so what I did was I set up a circle of pads and I would just, he would come over and I'd put his foot on a pad, right? And it doesn't matter which foot and it doesn't matter which pad at this point because he's, he's responding to all of them. And the idea is that I wanna take what we saw that he changed, how he changed when he was standing, which was the relaxation and the neck down, and take that into movement where we could start to get him, yeah, so cute, <laughs> so curious about the pads that we could shift the pattern of movement from that hollow, tight, hippie hop trot to a normal trot, right? So, you know, he walks over to a pad, I was somewhere else, I came back because he said I would like this pad. This is the, oh, this is one of the dog pads, Robin. We pulled Oh, that's out. right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. On this, the large, the uh, sure paws yeah. medium. And so interesting the way that he first went to the toe and then was able to balance on three legs on that toe bef and then he put it down. Uh, it's because it's not, you know, so common that they will uh, obviously rest a, a toe, a front toe. So you can see he's walking the circle, but look at the attitude, look at the yeah. softness. In the neck. Now he saw me and he's like, oh, the pad lady. <laughs> and so this is where, you know, a lot of horse owners say, you know, my horse likes you better than me. Well, they only like me better because I brought them the pads and they yeah. like the pads. So they associate them with me and they will do that with you. But look at this softening in the neck, look at the height of the head, look at the softening in the front of the shoulder, the better stance. Yeah. Right. And so the breathing change. And then Mandy's going to ask him to walk on. Look at how he put his neck down, but got a little stuck and then figured out how to walk forward without lifting his head up and back. Yeah, exactly. And then I kept expanding the circle and kind of telling Mandy, all right, I'm going to meet you at this pad, right? Somebody's got a question, I think. Oh, no, they just said that's awesome. Yeah. That was all it is. It, it, it was so much fun to do it. We also did this with a little Icelandic mare who, it, who, uh, after t being trained for an evaluation was became really ring sour and she just wouldn't go in the ring so we we did some of that and made it fun for her and she started to you know they kind of seek it out which is you know it's just a fun exercise to do that that also was really helpful yeah you're taking something that they've decided feels good right and then you're saying it's like musical chairs yeah yeah right? exactly. only it's like when when you see there's that hippie hop in yeah. the canner so we're yeah. yep we can see that and it's what i call less committed it's softer but it's still there and there he's trotting and then i stand at the pad and he gets to come over and i put his foot on a pad <laughs> <laughs> and so he's he's like starting to figure out that wherever i'm standing is where he needs to be because if i'm standing at a pad i'm going to put his foot on so what i would start to do then is i'd stand in the middle of the circle and i think do we have that footage? Is that because this one's almost done? Uh, it, I'm not sure. This is um, this is this was three. three, three. It might have been. I don't know whether we uh, we. I know what we did with him after is we did it free. We just did it free. But in look the at the difference in that getting... truck, right? And then he saw me and he started yeah. to get a little stuck because he spotted me and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> "She went to that pad. That's where I want to be." So. He stops at the pad, I pick up the foot, I put, it doesn't matter, I'm using the, that's the firm sure paws pad right now, and I can get two feet on that one because it's the same size as the full physio. Right? But you know, for this horse, it's also, it's offering him so many options and so many small new experiences. And I think that's that whole thing about the only way you can change a habit is to do something that's different. But if it's too different, you the habit can't change because they get stuck but it's this little bit of oh this is kind of nice so you they become more willing to try new things well and just look at the expression on his face yeah right and he thought i was going to a pad yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right and so there that's the end of that but i let's see if we have uh i don't know what uh i think oh i'm not sure about we have three five I think this is in the arena. You can try it, but I think it was in the indoor. When no, we this were is just... still outside. Oh, was it? Yep. Hang on. Just give me a quick time. Share screen. Uh, drop the sound out. Play. Oh, sorry. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. This is day three. Think about the trot we saw on day one. I know it's hard to remember. <laughs> then there you can see a little of the old place, right? He lifted the neck, had a tiny little hippie hop, right? And then he got back to the trot. So he's starting to figure out how to sort it out himself. Well, and remember this horse is, I think he's 16. So he's had this habit for a long time. You know? Yeah. And so we were not expected to see it completely no. disappear in three days. We're looking to see changes. We're looking we, to see possibility, right? It's that yep. possibility. Yep. So Robin, I'm going to just pause this for a second yep. um, because I think I have some before and after on my iPad because I see myself filming with my iPad there. So let me just see if I got some of that footage. I mean, th I think the thing that is, is so also so helpful is <clears throat> you're not really, if you pay attention to the horse and you're not trying to force them, <clears throat> excuse me, or train them or whatever, is that you're not really going to do harm. Right. Do, do you know what I mean? It's like the, you might not have it perfectly, but if you had paid attention to watching how Wendy asks for the foot, how she moves the, the pad underneath the foot with her foot, rather than getting her hands down there. So there's also the safety factor. And those are <clears throat> all things that are, I think are really important for people to just to, to really be aware of. All right, I'm just gonna show this picture because I think this is, is really cute. So here's Shiner, <laughs> <laughs> you know, standing on his pads, yeah. happy as a clam with all his other pads around him. That's uh, uh, that's really cute. So I don't. I actually did not put the iPad. Um, oh yeah, on here, right. but right. I do have this other little video that I um, I think is really fascinating. And let's see if I can open this up. Come on, open. Why are you not opening? Oh, there it goes. Uh, let's see. Screen share that one share so this was toward the this was like the last day and yeah. his left hind had been his sticky foot that we couldn't pick up um that it was that diagonal and yeah. so he's he's on that's actually a firm pad even though it's yellow topped and just watch how he tests out like he pushes into the pod yeah. and then comes off wow right and he does this repeatedly he presses into the pod and this is the foot we couldn't pick up yeah. Right? So now he's experimenting and it's not uncommon to see them just press with a toe like that and just kind of experiment feeling out the movement. Well, if you think about what that does for their balance, like in terms of these fine and the fine, really deep core muscles that they have to use in, in order to actually be able to negotiate through that. It's pretty, I think that's it's really, that's yeah. And the fact so that helpful. I think we worked with him uh, four times. I think we gave him a day off one day because we realized yeah. he was really tired. Yeah. We just did a little bit in the arena. Um, but his, his attitude, I think, for me was the most fun to see change because he started out with that kind of put upon, you know, oh, poor me, I got to be out here to like, hey, what are we doing today? And are we going yeah, exactly. to see pads and trotting around with his ears up and finding his yeah. trot? It was just, yeah. I, he makes me smile every time I think. I know, I know. And I thought, you know, I, I wanted to use those videos because it's rare that you get this sense of sort of all the videos and, and that awesome. can, you know, make a difference. And um, it's hard, yeah, it's hard to film like when you're by yourself, it's really hard to film and uh, work. And so yeah. that was why we set up the experiment. And I'm, I'm just really grateful that yeah. we did that because it's just. So this, this was interesting, like Lindy Decker in South Africa. Um, and we did this, we, we did a little bit of work with her horse. She, when the, when you, the old pads that you were using, yep. he stood under them twice under saddle. He didn't do a lot of swaying and there wasn't really much fuss. And then since then he's not interested in standing on any pad. And it was interesting because I worked with a little bit with her when I was there and we, you know, I kind of tried some of the things that you, I saw that you do and moving them away from him. He's an interesting horse because in my opinion, in his opinion might be, he doesn't need them. But my opinion is he's so, he's quite high behind. And so what I thought is if we could get him to stand on the front and release some of that, you know, tension through yeah. the shoulders, that it could be helpful. But he's quite a skeptical horse <laughs> in terms of if he, 
sort of think something's going to be bad, it's not that easy to convince them that it isn't. And bad. that's where like the half physio pad or the hard pad that is, it's ground like, it's a much more stable pad and gives slowly. Right. So some horses, and you have that one that, um, oh. you know, they feel that instability. They don't like it because right. it, it's, they don't know what to do with it and it's asking them to be different and it's too much ask. It's too yeah. far along the track. So that's where the harder pads and the half physio pad or even the hard slant, because you can be way down at the thin edge of the hard slant yeah. so that you only have like a quarter inch of material under their foot just to get like a little taste because sometimes it's like the change is too big and they yeah. can't go there. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody else had their hand up, but I think they put it down so you don't have it. So um, I don't know if anybody has any other questions that... Um, the hour goes oh, so Oh, wait. Fast. Two participants have raised their hand, but I can't not find the hand. Ah, there's a hand raise. Uh, okay. Oh, can we let her talk? We can let her talk. Kim. Yeah. Go ahead, Kim. If I muted you. Oh, she still looks muted on mine. Oh, it uh, says, un oh, wait, wait, unmute. How about that? Uh, why won't this? Maybe you have to do it. I'm, I'll see if I can unmute her. Kim, say something. Oh, it still, it still looks like it's blocked right now. Yeah, I, you know, I have not had, oh, try now, Kim. Here I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, you know, I, uh, Wendy, you, pr I, I got, uh, one thing is you probably don't remember me, but I did a, uh, week-long session with you in Greensburg, Pennsylvania at the fairgrounds. 15 oh, yeah. years ago or that something? A long time ago. That was wonderful. But there is not a day that goes by that I don't carry what I learned from you into my work. But anyway, just to say hi again, it's so wonderful to see you. And I've been following you ever since. And I'm, okay, so I have a saddlebred mare who has, she's very straight, very upright in the front. Okay, and she's very short strided and I'm always working with her to lengthen and it's got a very, very fast trot. Um, and so I'm, and I want to get these for all of my horses, but for her in particular, because after, um, and I'm in Southern Colorado and it's very sandy. We're an area where it's not real, real rocky, but very sandy. Mm -hmm. And um, if we're out like riding and through the meadows and up on the ranges and stuff, she um towards the end starts to get a little lame where the head and the neck are bobbing and i can tell she's off and i usually get off of her and then walk her home from there yeah. but what would you recommend i would start with hard okay um if she's really upright and she and you see that she gets really tired and sore um again you i always you can always go softer but if you go too soft you can sometimes make the horses not like the idea because it's too much and the hard pads i you know i it's so funny it's it's a it's a density that i come and go with like sometimes i'm like like now i'm it's been a, a big a big fan again and then i forget about it but for your horse i think the hard pad sounds like the best because it's going to give slowly so it's not going to be too challenging and mm -hmm. it's going to give the heat and pressure and since she's very upright um you don't want her to have to negotiate a lot of instability. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does. And I, that's what I was thinking. I was on your website reading and I was kind of thinking about that, but I just really want, I was going to email you about all that, but I'm glad I got to talk with you both. Thank yeah. you so much. This oh, is just welcome. phenomenal. It's been a great week. I'm being home. I got to watch everything. So yeah. <laughs> really well, I'm more guests next week. So, uh, you know, yeah. I look forward to it. I'm Thank so you both. Thanks. Great. Thanks for, for coming. Sure. In. So here's another question. So it seems as though it's a kind of trial and error of the pads to start. So I'll just let you answer that. Um, it is and isn't. I mean, it's, uh, if a horse is anxious, nervous, I'm always going to go to harder physio. If it's common, go to go to firm, but you know, you, it's the bell curve and, and the majority of horses are right in the middle of the bell curve and you offer them a pad and they absolutely love it. Um, out on the very edges of the bell curve, I, you know, we had Huey who fell down. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a, two horses bronc off pads but so i'm always working toward those outliers and looking for them because those are the ones where you've got to be super cautious but the majority of horses are right in that bell curve and then we have some that won't get off like literally won't get off i had one woman leave her horse on the pads for an hour which i really don't recommend because that's so much demand on all the little postural muscles um but you know in the eight years of doing this there's 
I can think of a handful of horses where I was like, not they they didn't want to or they there was mitigating circumstances and i've only had like a couple horses that i never got on a pad after four days but you know you learn something from those horses too and you learn how to help them process information so there's always something to learn right so another uh so this could be could this be used with a rider to build confidence with an insecure horse to transfer yeah. the herd security to the rider, yeah, to Absolutely. make them feel better. Um, uh, I have horses all the time that um, are very herd bound because they don't feel secure with a person and you start with Surefoot with their friends around so that it's not too high a demand. Again, you don't wanna push them to where they're already anxious, but yeah. you start with the pads with their friends and then you start to move the pads away and move, and it might be over days or weeks, but you start to move and pretty soon they're very calm and relaxed and secure because they've got their pad and they, you know, they're feeling so chill, they don't need their friend. And then you become that security for them. So. Absolutely, uh, I've seen this help so many horses with separation anxiety because they only are looking to their other friends for help. And yeah. when they start to realize we're offering a good feeling to them, then they start to look to us for that comfort. Um, I see somebody asked for the farrier. The yeah. physio pads are phenomenal for the farriers. You can put it under a front foot because a lot of times it's like, he doesn't want to extend the rear feet, but it may be that he's really uncomfortable in front. And so, yeah, well, it's, it just said he doesn't like to give or extend rear feet for the farrier. He's high behind. Yeah. And, and, and so which pads to try? So actually, the, with that horse, um, I usually use the physio pad for the farriers, yeah. but if he's really low in front, it might benefit him to use the hard pads and lift him up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And then you can do, you know, so they can stand out behind. Yeah. And then the other question was, would it be any use to offer relief for serious navicular? Absolutely. He ridden and he has underslung heels, which, yeah. And again, I'd start with hard with that kind of horse. Um, I just had one really, I've uh, forgotten how old he goes, very arthritic horse. And we started with the hard pad and you could just see the relief in his face. And so we, we gradually uh, moved to the firm, but the hard was great because again, if you have arthritis or something like that, you don't want a lot of, lot of lateral instability because it's too much demand. And that's where the hard pad can be so helpful. Yeah, cool. Um, and then it was uh, whether it would be help with a horse that was hard to catch, do it, you could do it in the pasture. I think you oh, could do it in the pasture. I have fabulous stories about that. <laughs> so um, I was doing a surefoot workshop in Colorado and um, Amy Salisat brought two horses that she purposely didn't handle um, ahead of time. And one of them was a horse that she bred that had gone away and then the woman turned her back and gave her back to Amy. And the other was a horse that came in for training. It was a gated horse from, I think, West Virginia. And the gated horse was what I would ca call rather uneducated. And the other horse was quite educated, but they both didn't want to be caught. Mm -hmm. So they brought them to the workshop and I worked with uh, one horse loose in the round pen and the other was just in a pen. Um, and I just spent time and let them move away if they wanted to and just offered the pads. And the next day when Amy's husband went to the gate, the horses were standing at the gate waiting for them. Nice, nice. So, that's yeah. Good. Well, that's great. Well, this was, this was fun, uh, Wendy. The, um, somebody from Susan Hand, formerly from the San Diego Zoo um, in Southern Utah now, it's it's so nice. One of the things I love about these Zoom meetings is that you get you get to reconnect with people like you did with Kim and um, yeah. and and just connect with people that you maybe don't know very well. Um, so I think that yeah, I I hope that was helpful for people. Yeah, I and um, I just really enjoyed getting to look at those videos again because <laughs> lots of fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I think um, it's it's two fifteen and my yeah. battery is getting low, so I think we need to end it here. Thank you all for joining me. This has been a pleasure. Tomorrow at one o'clock, I have a Surefoot workshop um, uh, webinar, and I'm going to go a little more into detail with some other videos that I have. So please join me tomorrow. And then next week, I have another lineup of guests. I think I've got Ida Hammer coming back. Um, and I, I moved the time around a little bit next week so that I can catch some of the people in Australia. So all right. I'll putting up an email this weekend. So if you're not on my mailing list, please go to murdochmethod.com and join the mailing list and you will get all the links to all the um, upcoming webinars and also the links to the 
the meetings that we've already had. I put them in the bottom of the email with everybody's name and with a link so you can get directly to those videos. Um, and thank you, Robin, for joining me once again. This yeah, is thanks. Okay, there's one more question. A horse with weak, weak stifles that the left uh, especially pops and slips especially in downward transition, what pad would you recommend? Uh, again, start harder bef uh, because yeah. if it's that weak, you don't want a lot of instability. So hard and hard slant would be the pads that I would suggest there. Um, Ida Hammer uh, on her um, talk had a video of the muscles working around the stifle while the horse was, I think, even on a physio pad. Wow. So, you know, hard, hard slants would be where to go, especially in that kind of weakness. Yep. Cool. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks. everybody. And um, you can, Thanks. where can they find you, Robin? Uh, Ttouch.ca. There you go. So you can find me. Okay. Robin Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.